and welcome to Qatar 365, the show that offers a fresh outlook on Doha and the local neighbourhood with me, Miranda Atti. This episode is all about ambition, creativity and innovation as we meet some young entrepreneurs set to make their mark during the World Cup and beyond. Braille entertainment platform Bonacle offers new access to digital content. We visit an innovation hub inspiring tech businesses and we explore the legacy of reality edutainment show Stars of Science. Accessibility is an important factor when it comes to organising any big event and the World Cup is no different. Here in Qatar, one local startups ensuring digital content is being made readily available for visually impaired fans. Ardal Halim met the team at Bonacle to learn more. Video games can be challenging for all sorts of reasons, and even more so if you're visually impaired. For Akrami Ahmad, a new device has taken gaming to another level. This completely changes um, uh, the equation. I mean, like, it, it's so tiny, it's so small, like you can carry it around. This is revolutionary in my opinion. Um, however, uh, it comes, uh, to be honest, with a learning curve. Based inside Qatar Science and Technology Park, Bonacle is the brainchild of two engineering students who developed a Braille entertainment platform by chance. Abdul Razak Ali broke his hand in a car accident and sought help from the school's special needs center. That's where we got to interact with the blind community more. How do they use technology? Do they use Instagram? How do they use WhatsApp? How do they get access to the study material and paperwork? We found these, we went through the struggle they went through every day, whether getting access to the content and struggling to get some volunteers to write it in an accessible format before even studying. As with many startups, the founders of Bonacle tried and tested several different handheld devices like this stylus, a tablet, even a glove, before finally settling on this computer mouse-like prototype. Bonacle's assistive technology gives smartphone users a chance to learn and read Braille as well as access to a wide range of digital content, from books to games. The creative team told Qatar 365 that until now, Braille technology was either very expensive, bulky, or unreliable, thus widening the divide between the blind community and their sighted peers, until now. Co-founder Rami Solomon says that's something that shouldn't exist in the 21st century. It was always a shock to us that they were always segregated. They had their separate schools, separate institutions, and even the workplaces, they would usually be segregated from the rest of the uh, community. We want to have them integrated in our society, in our classrooms, in our workspaces, in our game center. This esports tournament recently tested Bonacle's abilities. What we're trying to do is basically um, include the blind players uh, within the gaming community locally here in Qatar. Ahmed says it felt great to play amongst the larger community. It's the true meaning of it, uh, integration, like to take part of, of the main street events and uh, to actually get engaged with the real gamers. So, uh, yes, it's definitely fun and, and I'm truly looking forward to see what more can be done with this tiny little device. There have been challenges along the way for Bonacle, including trying to manufacture a new product during a pandemic. However, the team received a massive sign of confidence in the technology and has been tasked with converting digital content into Braille during the upcoming World Cup. Back at QSTP, Ahmed, who is a Braille teacher, can envision the day Bonacle becomes a regular part of a blind person's daily routine. The challenges we face here in Qatar are being faced by the blind community all over the world. We're looking ahead for the future, we're looking for more improvements, for more inclusion in the society. And he believes the accessibility gap will continue to close with more technological advancements leveling the playing field. Someone who is extremely familiar with what it takes to be a successful entrepreneur is Haifa Al Abdullah, Innovation Director at QSTP. I caught up with her to discover exactly what makes it a key platform for startups and tech ventures, from funding and mentorship to incubation. 
for us, it's important to have the space to build a community, but it's more important to bring the right people and make the right connections that startups need, whether they're connecting them to investors, to right mentors, or even to the market opportunities out there. And if we see opportunities for people outside Qatar, we also allow them to find these and explore these opportunities pr through new programs that we are offering to them. Tell us a little bit more about some of the funds. So we, we, we support entrepreneurs at different stages. So we have the support at idea stage, where we actually educate young startups on how to build their business model, how to come up with a successful idea. And then we do beyond that what we call the Elevate program. This is where we actually help startups grow. So beyond that journey, they can actually verify their ideas outside Qatar, where they actually can sell or explore other markets. And a lot of it is also, I guess, about having this space for collaboration or a space to learn from other people. And, and we see that here, don't we? Yeah, definitely. Like that's the whole essence of it is being part of Qatar Foundation gives people opportunities to connect with talents, bring students, uh, connect with other uh, mentors and technical expertise within the research institutes that we have around. And you've been working in the innovation space for a long time. What would you say are some of your major tips that you would offer entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think the, the key element is really like not to focus on the idea, but build the right team from the beginning. Make sure that you choose the right people before choosing the right idea. Like you have to really make sure that you as a person have the capacity to lead a tech uh, startup and that you bring together with you the right people because that's gonna help you. It's a tough journey and if you have people with you, I would, I would see that you are more likely to succeed and I've seen it with a lot of startups, like walking alone in that journey is not that easy, so find a partner. But that's not all. QSTP is also the setting for Qatar Foundation's long-running reality TV edutainment show, Stars of Science, which sees Arab inventors compete to be crowned top innovator. But what happens to the entrepreneurs after their season ends? Well, we caught up with a couple of alumni to find out what they're working on now. Khalid Abu Jassim didn't just compete on Stars of Science. In 2012, he went on to win the 12-week competition. Stars of Science really provided a unique experience where they put us literally in, a, in an innovation camp. We were working day and night, focusing on our innovations, asking the fundamental questions behind the novelty uh, of our projects. So for me, it was a condensed journey that took me through the product development life cycle from proof of concept to engineering to product design and then concluding it with marketing and looking at the business viability of the product. His product? An autonomous cooking robot named Oliver. Khalid originated the idea even before going on the show when he came up with the concept of using artificial intelligence to create perfectly cooked home style recipes. In 2012, 2011, we were just starting and grassrooting. At the time, there was only one uh, digital incubation center in the whole country. So definitely the ecosystem has grown. For me, I, I was thinking of building a global company. It is a global challenge, it's a, a global need that uh, we need to really uh, address when it comes to uh, having high quality food accessible through technology and robotics. Oliver may have been through a few physical iterations, but the concepts always remain the same. But how does it taste? On today's menu, shrimp pasta made entirely by machine. Mmm, that is absolutely delicious. Now Khalid is on a mission to bring his idea to as many kitchens as possible. That includes personal households, but also commercial settings. Eventually, the plan would be to have an Oliver fleet of automated chefs for restaurants, catering, and even offshore rigs and boats. Majid Labadidi competed on Stars of Science's third season. Now the CEO of Rawi Al Kotob, an Arabic audio content provider, Majid has managed a number of businesses. For him, being an entrepreneur 
is all about mindset. So the hardest thing being an entrepreneur is like keeping your enthusiasm levels up. Because one day is amazing, the second day is like bumps falling down from the sky. It's like waiting for um, an investor to call back or a message from a client. It's never going to be stable. So keeping your um, discipline always on top, um, being always passionate about what you have is very hard. But eventually things will go back to track. So that's what I learned. It's like you have to be patient, you have to be disciplined, and things will pay off. More than a decade after appearing on the program, Majid now passes on some of the things he's learned to new contestants. So every year the South of Science family grows and every year I have a chance to actually go and meet the other newcomers, the new stars that's actually building their new ideas, brilliant ideas. And I see like the passion um, in their eyes, like learning from the other experience. And this is where we will love to be part of their like a new journey. Stars of Science aims to drive interest in science and innovation. But more than that, the show also fosters an entrepreneurial ecosystem in the region, one that extends long beyond the 12 weeks of the competition. From technology to food, there's plenty of inspiring projects on the go. And that's it for another episode. But if you have any questions, just reach out via our hashtag Qatar365. Thanks for watching. Do check out euronews.com for more. And join us again next time on Qatar365.